This is Brad Smallwood with Facebook, um, who leads their, uh, let's see, it's their marketing science team. So first of all, just so the audience understands your role and what your team does, could you explain marketing science and, and what you do? Yeah, so marketing science, uh, you know, our, our general goal is to help marketers understand the value that they're getting uh, from, from their, their marketing, and that not just on Facebook, and so there's a bunch of different pieces of that. One is kind of working with, uh, you know, largest, actually large advertisers and small advertisers uh, to help them evolve their measurement practices. You know, the, the simple example would be uh, something we did a bunch of years ago with the Datalogix folks, uh, now Oracle Data Cloud, uh, of kind of moving away from media mix models as the standard of measurement for, from CP, uh, for CPG to, you know, these uh, outcome-based uh, uh, solutions looking at actual in-store uh, purchases, but kind of, kind of helping to evolve the industry and then getting the adoption of some of those, those new uh, platforms. So that's kind of one piece of it. The other is that, uh, you know, as um, Terry was just alluding to, there's uh, a lot of changes in how marketing uh, is bought. The traditional television industry bought through large insertion orders in the upfront fronts or whatever. Uh, most of the digital ecosystem is bought through uh, auction-based environments. Helping marketers understand how best to buy in those auction environments is, is kind of another uh, piece where my, my team comes in. Great. And, and I just asked them, I said, how big is your organization? You know, it's not a, not a small organization. There's four or 500 people worldwide in every office except for one, I think you said, worldwide. So this is a We're major, major focus uh, at Facebook. So. So first, I wanted to kind of address the elephant in the room, since there's been a lot of uh, you know recent uh, recent news about measurement snafus. Latest one being the uh, carousel ads last week. So just love to hear your your comments on that. Yeah, I, um, yeah, that one. I wouldn't call that a, as much a, a measurement uh, measurement error as a, a bug. Uh, you know, we. You know, <laughs> so how many people work in digital? Uh, you know, uh, you know, one of the one of the challenges that happens in in an environment where you're you know, actively kind of changing things uh, a bunch of times is that you, there are bugs introduced. What this particular bug was, was for a very small kind of uh, a, knit, a corner case of what we call carousel ads. Uh, when somebody viewed the carousel uh, ad, um, uh, it, we counted it as a, a click in some cases when they were just viewing the ad or a, a link click when they were just viewing the ad. Happened in about 0.06% of our revenue. Uh, so that so it's a very small kind of niche case, but it's an issue, and it, it is one of the things that we've kind of put in place is uh, a whole series of kind of checks and balances and uh, constant kind of retesting of code in order to to find these bugs. Because what we're not going to do is stop changing our system um, because we're so afraid of, of of ever creating a bug. We're going to build better systems in order to kind of constantly test and improve those systems. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that, that Terry mentioned in the presentation, oh, wow. yeah, I think this is actually Facebook code you said, so, wow, <laughs> um, was the, C definitely uh, does equal D there, so. <laughs> was, um, you know, the, since, you know, the term walled gardens and you're operating the, the, you know, your own properties with a, not a lot of visibility in there, it does seem like the walled gardens are opening up, um, you know, with third party measurement in order to, provide the comfort to, to the marketers out there. Um, I believe you're working with Moat, IS, Double Verify. I'd love to hear how you're working with those partners, you know, what metrics you're enabling them to report on, and, uh, and anything in the future that you plan on doing in that area. Yeah, so um, you know, there's a lot of discussions about the uh, walled garden concept. Uh, we've been uh, partnering for, for measurements for eight years now. Our first partnership was with was with Nielsen, uh, you know, building brand effect, and then we partnered with them to help them build, a di you know, the digital ad uh, rating systems and their total ad rating systems. And we partnered with uh, we partnered with Data Logics. Uh, I know Eric's here. It's like six and a half years ago, six six ish years uh, ago now. So we've been kind of pushing our data into these measurement systems for a really long time. The latest uh, one of those, as you mentioned, is, uh, is around viewability. Uh, we're pushing, uh, pushing information into these viewability vendors, whether the Moat slash Oracle, IAS, uh, Double Verify, uh, whichever, and we, and we have a whole host of, of partnerships around there. 
Uh, but the important thing that, that we're kind of going, and we, we had a, a conversation with the ANA uh, back, in, back in February about this, is um, you know, just providing the information that uh, an impression met the MRC standard or the Group M standard or whatever kind of number you want to have out there, we, we don't believe that that's sufficient. What we, we believe in this idea of providing kind of total information about everything that happened with, your, with an individual impression, providing uh, exactly how long an impression was, was seen for, uh, you know, ideas of how much of that was seen, uh, was seen for various pieces of time, uh, understanding about sound on and passing that kind of full payload of information about the impression, passing that to the to the viewability vendors. Now then the viewability vendors will, um, they can report on that, but what we're also hoping they're doing, this is why we're so excited about the Oracle uh, data, cl data cloud um, uh, kind of acquisition of Moat, is tie the that viewability information to the actual outcomes. I think Terry had it in one of his slides uh, about like get rid of the proxies thing. So viewability is still a proxy. Yes, you need somebody, you need a, an impression to have shown up in order to have the opportunity to, uh, to see and then create value. But ultimately, you want to understand how it drove to incremental uh, outcomes, whether that be in-store, uh, brand uh, attitude outcomes, or, or whatever. And so our, what we're doing is we're kind of passing that really that really detailed information, and then hoping that those are then tied to those, to those uh, end outcomes. Right. Love to dive into that a little bit more. I remember when Facebook was going through the IPO, there was you know, questions by some advertisers. Well, if, I, if, I see, if there's an ad shown on Facebook, is it driving in-store results you know, for CPG autos, et cetera? And that's when you did put together that partnership with Eric and team at DataLogix, and I believe it was like Axiom and Epsilon. Yep. Um, as a quick reminder, I'd, if you could walk through how that worked, because I personally, I'm an analytics guy, found it fascinating, you know, measuring true lift yeah. of in-store, and then also love to hear you know, if that's been kind of furthering over the years uh, from that initial. Yeah, one of the, first of all, you know, uh, Eric, where are you? Oh, there you are. There he is. Okay. There he is. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, working with those guys is so hard. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, um, yeah, so we actually, uh, you know, the story that came out uh, a few weeks or a week or two before our IPO was really, really pleasant. But, uh, but we had actually been working with Eric and his team for about eight months at that point, and we actually had the system up and running. We already actually given it to uh, the major advertisers, or what we call our client council. Um, and the, the idea is kind of we pass impression level information uh, to, to, uh, to uh, data logics at the time, and then they matched it up. Uh, they matched it up with uh, their loyalty card data, and we all, we we also um, kind of gave them a lot of information so that they could uh, build these control groups. Uh, and these control groups would look exactly like the set of people that we had exposed to the advertising, uh, and they and what's called a model control group. And then we can look at the actual incremental. Uh, benefit of, the, of Facebook marketing. So that's kind of one approach to Lyft is where you build these model control groups and you have a, a, a really good set of information in order to make sure that your control group looks exactly like your exposed group. The other thing that we do, and we actually have, a, we do this with our MTA provi pro uh, providers and we have a, uh, uh, what we call our partner Lyft API now that uh, a lot of players are using where we actually establish control groups ahead of time. So instead of having to model those control groups, you actually can, can, uh, can hold out a set of people who look exactly like the people that are gonna see the ads, and you can, uh, you, you can serve ads to, uh, to some of them, not to others, and then you can look at the lift that the, that the marketing is creating. When, when we talk about measurement, just like you're talking about viewability, it's really important, this idea of a lift is what marketers are looking for. Not just, not just that you know, I ran an ad and a bunch of people showed up in store. Well, that may be because of the ad, but it also could be because of a bunch of other dynamics. Looking at the incrementality that a Facebook marketing campaign or any marketing campaign creates is really what kind of the digital measurement is all about and, and enabling uh, partners like the data logics, uh, or sorry, the oracles of the world uh, in order to do that is kind of really where our strategy is and where we're kind of very much not in kind of the walled garden camp, uh, although we're not providing individual level data to everybody who wants it, what we are doing is providing very granular information to these measurement companies so that they can run these kind of analyses. Great, and you just mentioned the MTA, the multi-touch attribution guys. Since Facebook's a big part of the industry, but there is TV and radio and, and you know, Google, et cetera, 
how do you work with those vendors so um, the, the, the marketers can see you know, what is driving um, you know, the revenues? Yeah, there's, so there's a couple different ways we work with MTA uh, that kind of to approach MTA. One, we have a, an MTA partnership uh, program where we, uh, we pass, similar to the, some of the work that we did with DataLogic so many years ago, pass them very granular information so that they can uh, um, so that they can look not just on Facebook, they can have tags running on other, uh, on other publishers and even, even non-digital publishers, and then they can build these multi-touch attribution models. We basically let them operate, uh, operate the system on the Facebook identity, and by doing that, they get not just a, not just a Facebook view of a world, but kind of a, a total people, uh, a person level view of, of all of the marketing touches that somebody has, and then they can build their MTA models from that, that person level uh, approach. So that's, so that's kind of the, the partner program. And, you know, we've partnered with a, a whole host of companies in that space. Um, the, then, then there's kind of enabling that same type of approach on, uh, on Facebook where we have our own MTA solutions where, uh, so people can do, can do that themselves. Again, using a, a, the, the people-based people -based system to do that. Um, our goal and one of you know, my ask for, for this audience, we are looking for, you know, we are constantly looking for more MTA, uh, MT, MTA companies that we, that, that we uh, can operate with. One of, the, one of the requirements that we have is kind of going back to that previous answer around Lyft. Like we, we need these systems not just to be like a kind of a, you know, uh, an MTA that's just, you know, just trying to kind of be a measurement system but not be really, really granular and based on Lyft. Our focus is on all of these systems to actually be looking at the incrementality that you're creating, that, that you're creating with your marketing, not just on Facebook but on kind of all platforms. Great. Um, so you mentioned some of your capabilities. Love to hear more about Atlas. It's been interesting to watch that with you know acquiring Atlas as an ad server, launching it as kind of the people-based as part of the people-based marketing, and I believe now it's part of your group and really being part of the um, the advanced measurement you're doing. Yeah, and so if you think about Atlas, uh, what you know, three or four years ago, uh, you know, it's very, very much kind of designed to work with the largest advertisers uh, in the world and kind of use it, use it as a, a as an ad server. And, and as kind of the mobile ecosystem has developed, the, the con like the importance of just the ad serving piece of. Uh, uh, of a system is, is not the same. We believe that in you know in the future, uh, a large percentage of ads are going to be delivered um, in mobile app experiences, and so the ad serving thing is not the not the key piece of uh, of Atlas. Uh, it was actually the measurement, the measurement piece. And so what we've kind of done and kind of morphed what what we're working with is this this uh, product that we just recently launched called advanced measurement. And the idea of advanced measurement is to kind of put this idea of people-based people -based measurement into not just the hands of the largest advertisers and agencies in the world, but kind of make it a part of, uh, of our, quite honestly, our ads manager system. And so the idea of kind of taking people-based people -based measurement uh, principles and putting it into our, our ads manager, and that's where kind of Atlas, Atlas and advanced measurement are kind of uh, merging together to do that. Great. So we've talked about uh, measurement, but obviously you know, marketing science, which also includes the optimization, you know, helping your marketers drive the most value you know, using Facebook. So I'd love to hear um, kind of what you're doing there and some of the things that you do that really drive uh, value for, for marketers. Yeah, so uh, you know, the, the, the first thing, and I'm going I'm to keep saying it, and it's a broken <laughs> record, but is this, this idea of lift. Uh, of really helping marketers understand and build systems that help them understand the lift, uh, the lift of their marketing. So that's kind of the principle of every, everything, uh, of how we operate on everything when we work with marketers. So, so with that, um, as you know, new platforms come up, like mobile, for example, um, and then you know, Facebook within mobile or Snap or Twitter within mobile, there's a, there's a whole, whole lot of work to be done to understand, well, how best to talk to people on a on a mobile device, you know, we saw the we saw the uh, thing about the MRC standard of uh, I think it's a the, the original desktop standard for display was you know 50% of the ad for for one second on on display. Well, the question you know the question is if you're a marketer, 
um, how do you get your message across on a mobile device? When somebody, you know, I think most people kind of know this motion as you're, as you're going through a, a news feed uh, type environment or, a, you know, a snap or any type of environment, how, how, do, how do you get your message across quickly? Um, how do you kind of create value from that message? And how long, quite honestly, does it take to, to start creating value? And then, like, how do you kind of hold on to the attention of, of of people as you do it. And so one of the things that we spend a lot of time doing is helping marketers understand how to do that and how, build, how to build creative uh, to do that well. So that's kind of one chunk. The other piece is that, uh, and I forgot who it was just saying earlier, is like, you know, the idea it's, well, you can build these really targeted segments um, and build the perfect creative for one particular segment, but really what a lot of marketers need is reach. And so I'm also helping marketers understand where that trade-off is between reach, uh, you know, reach and frequency and effectively uh, kind of reaching people and uh, delivering very targeted and going after exactly the niche audience that they're looking for. So helping marketers kind of understand where that kind of uh, good crossover is and then building campaigns around that. Excellent. So I want to just conclude with, you mentioned you know, some ways to work with, with Facebook, but since there are a lot of people out here that you know, may want to work with you, you know, in, in, uh, in your, your area, i um, love to hear if there's any kind of closing thoughts about the best way to do that. Yeah, so you know, the, you know, my, my team, and I would say not just my team, but kind of uh, uh, you know, the ads group at Facebook, we're really focused on um, how to plug in information to help build uh, better, marketing, uh, better marketing campaigns for marketers. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean plugging it all into Facebook, but kind of uh, helping marketers build campaigns that are based on data and science and then improving their campaigns. And so the things that we look for is we look for, whether it be partnerships or, uh, or even deeper partnerships, is really um, how, how uh, companies are helping marketers do that. Uh, you know, and then this is the broken record part. Um, it, and it can't just be that you know you uh, kind of run it and it looks good to the marketer. It actually has to drive incremental benefit for the uh, for the marketer, whether that be whether that be through finding the right audiences that they're looking for or helping marketers understand how to how to talk to them uh, more effectively. Uh, and so there, there's kind of you know kind of key pieces of that. One is what are the data what are the data assets that you're that you're kind of bringing to the equation. Uh, the other piece would be what are the um, uh, what are kind of the analytical capabilities that you're bringing in, and your ability to kind of uh, tie together uh, both different data items, but also kind of um, build deep, kind of uh, uh, rich uh, insights off of that. And then the last piece will be really um, about the service ability, so the ability to actual to to work with marketers and and help them. Um, help them build these better campaigns day to day. So not just a technology piece, but also kind of helping them service it. So those are kind of the, the three components of how we think about it. Excellent. I see we're right out of time. So see, perfect see timing. Yeah, that was excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you very much.